But we are going to look at Randwick with our good friend, of course, Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments. Dean, good morning to you. Welcome to uh, SEN Track again. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? I'm well. Ah, that weather, that old darn Sydney weather, Dean. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it's uh, it's it's not looking too flush for uh, for today and and tomorrow in particular. And and there's still rain forecast for Saturday. So uh, if they do run, it's just going to be an absolute quagmire. It's the only way to describe it. It'll be a heavy ten, eleven, twelve. Um, and and hopefully we can get through the racing. But otherwise, they they might have to push back. I guess the only thing, and I'm going to take the positive angle, is that we haven't raced on it for four weeks. So it's not like Rose Hill. And last Saturday, when that was their third meeting back, yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, and the other positive is that Randwick has raced unbelievably well. Um, the quality of the drainage of these tracks these days is uh, just different to how it's ever been in the past. You know, the really quality tracks like Flemington and Randwick that have invested a lot. Um, you know, they, they're surprising us with how well they're racing on on uh, times like these. So we, we could well get through. Well, let's have a look at, uh, by the way, it's not only Zoo Station that has come out of the New Haven race, but Mullane has come out of the Inglis Sires this morning. I think Peter Moody's been keeping an eye on the weather and he's made the decision that uh, it's a no-go for that two-year-old. So Mullane is out of the Inglis Sires and Zoo Station out of the Country Championships final. Uh, I think a lot of trainers are waiting to see um, what it's going to be like come Saturday morning. Four Group 1s, Dean. I want to start with the Doncaster, if we can. Uh, I'm Thunderstruck right now at Bet365 is at $5. Uh, Ellsberg at $15. Uh, Ice Bath at $16. Uh, we've got at uh, $4.60 Forbidden Love. Converge at $9. And just above that, Mr. Brightside is at 15 What are you thinking of this year's race? Uh, yeah, look, it's a, an interesting race. Obviously, the heavy track um, throws things up in the air a, a fair bit. Uh, you know, Ellsberg will, will lead. Forbidden Love will be handy. Uh, Dallas Ann Lighthouse converge. Mr. Brightside likely handy as well. Um, and, and just folk and laws of indices forward of midfield. The rest sort of tend to get back. Um, I think what's uh, you know interesting about this race it's always a good form horses race. The last 10 winners have all finished first or fourth at the last start. And nine out of the 10 have finished in the first five at the second and third last start. So it's always a race where you want to be in form. Uh, the other interesting thing, particularly in relation to I'm Thunderstruck and a couple of others, in, in the last 10 years, the first two home have only had their last start uh, in Sydney um, for, the, for the Epsom Handicap. Nothing has, has come out of the Melbourne race. Um, and in the Epsom in the autumn, only one horse out of the uh, uh, the top 20 has um, uh, come off a Melbourne last start run. So it's very rare in these in these group one miles that a horse comes out of a Melbourne race. Um, we've got on Thunderstruck here as the second favourite coming out of a very, very good run um, in the All-Star Mile. Uh, but but given that fact, I'm, I'm probably going to be looking to, to bet around him. I think uh, Forbidden Love is, is, is rates very clearly on top. Um, she just loves it where she, she bolted in this prep at Group 2 level before winning the, the Group 1 Canterbury Stakes and the George Ryder. Incredibly well weighted um, at, at 50 kgs. Um, and, you know, if she runs to the same sort of ratings she's been running um, in her past uh, three starts, then she is going to be very hard to beat. Given the uh, conditions, she's extremely well weighted, isn't she? At fifty for the the uh, performances that we've been seeing, and she's a lover of wet tracks. There's not too many negatives. No, look, she's 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 really flying at the moment uh, for the stable. Uh, you know, new rider Hugh Bowman's obviously uh, you know getting along really well with her. Doesn't lose anything with Jamie Carr, uh, but it's just that different association. Um, you know, she ran in this race last year and, and was beaten four lengths, but she's obviously going uh, a lot better here as a, as a four-year-old. Um, you know, I guess I guess she's probably, you know, at a peak around 1,400, uh, you know, a tough round with mile on a heavy track, um, you know, coming into this after a couple of peak runs. Yeah, that, that's probably just, you know, the, the, the question mark, I suppose, whether she's targeted this as much as, as a couple of the others. Um, but on your sort of weights and measures, she's she's clearly on top. I think uh, you know, another horse I'm, I'm really surprised about the price is um, 
laws of indices. Uh, there's sort of 31 plus about uh, about him. Uh, you know, the George Wright is a clear um, key lead up race for this. Um, and, and he came off a, a slashing run in the Southern Cross first up, but then pulled up lame in the, in the Canterbury Stakes. And, and, you know, he was very unhappy that day in the yard. So it was clear there was some sort of issue. Um, so he sort of run short and then he, he came to the George Ryder and was only beaten, uh, you know, 1.6 lengths. And, and, and he's one that drops from 58 and a half there to 53. Um, and I'm just surprised, uh, given he's got a very nice profile for this race, uh, to see him at, at sort of $34. Can I ask you, Dean, how in relevance to you uh, when you're doing the Doncaster, these lightweights on a heavy track like Converge, and you mentioned Forbidden Love, but Converge that we haven't spoken about with the 49 and a half, uh, how important is it? Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big help. Um, and, and, you know, the deeper, uh, the deeper the track gets, um, the more you're going to want a horse that, uh, you know, A, has a bit of a lightweight, um, but B is, is fit, you know, and, and handles the, the conditions. Um, but if you look at the really sort of wet tracks that we've had um, in Doncaster's, you know, it's somewhat one with 55 kgs, uh, Sacred Falls, one with 56 and a half and, and 53 kgs, and it was pretty wet. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, while it's an advantage, um, there's, there's nothing stopping the, the good horses in this race, um, you know, winning. It's, it's more often than not on a, on a wet track, and there's sort of a split between five winners between 49 and 53 kgs and five between 55 and 57 and a half. Uh, so, um, you know, while it helps, uh, you know, good horses can, can win this race with, um, with pretty much any weight. You mentioned that Melbourne, that's uh, strong leads to horses that have been running in Sydney, but the win of Kiss on all four cheeks at Flemington is one that I, 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 th I don't think we can ignore it, given just how easy it was. Yeah, look, it, 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 was, a, it was a nice win. Um, I think the query with him is the sort of really heavy track um and and so you know coming off a melbourne run and a and a heavy track and also um you know he sort of potentially missed a run where he was going to run in the uh she was going to run sorry in the the emancipation and then you know sort of left it because of the wet track so i'm, I'm going to risk kissing all feet for cheeks i think there's sort of one there's one roughy that I, I quite like coming out of a melbourne run and that's that's a horse called numerian yeah um and he's the one this, this this horse's overseas form is unbelievable it, it beat Cox Plate winner Sir Dragon A by three lengths over 2,000 metres on a wet track and ran second beaten ahead by Armory who ran second in the Cox Plate uh, on a wet track as well. Um, we've seen him twice in Australia. He ran really well in the Bill Ritchie, only beaten two lengths with very strong late sectionals and then was spelled. Um, and then, you know, he's beaten two lengths first up in Melbourne but was carrying 60 kgs. Actually, on weight and measures ratings, um, you know, his ratings in that run were better than and everything out of the, the all-star mile really but besides i'm thunderstruck um it's already been a bit of a nibble for him 100 to 80 to one but uh you know if there's a roughy horse who you know on a really heavy track you might be looking for a 2000 meter horse who loves the wet um i, I wish new had had one more run he's coming to the second up but um you know i think he's actually a great roughy coming out of that melbourne form yeah well, right now at uh bet 365 is 71 and nearly 20 dollars the place new Marion. so the ones that you've mentioned the 16 forbidden love six laws of indices and 13 the Marion. yeah i think they're, they're sort of three that that you can certainly back uh, i think converge has spoken all uh, about a lot um you know whether really heavy track suits him i'm not sure but but down the weight some hope and Lighthouse is another one that just keeps running well for Kieran Ma. So, um, you know, ticks a lot of the boxes in terms of the lead up form and, and the consistent, uh, uh, consistent good form as well. It uh, certainly pays to get to winning edge investments because Dean was on fire last week with multiple winners. You can check it all out by going to winningedgeinvestments.com uh, right through uh, the Autumn Racing Carnival, two days of the championships, and then there's some terrific racing on the other side of that. But Winning Edge Investments. Dot com. Let's go back to the TJ Smith, Dean. Um, Shelby, 66. This is remarkable. Just uh, the attention on this horse now. We've spoken with Danny Williams multiple times, and it's going to get a heavy track again. It's it's just amazing. I mean, it's just, this is the, this is probably the best sprint race in the world, um, you know, in terms of ratings. And, and you've got, you've got this horse that, uh, you know, couldn't win the country, 
uh, earlier this prep, uh, you know, having its seventeenth run this prep, um, and it's a you know five dollar chance. It's just um, it's just hard to believe, you know, <laughs> uh, against the world's best sprinter and nature strip and and Eduardo, who's sort of been. Uh, you know his bridesmaid for his career a fair bit, and and just so many other good quality horses. It's just it's just hard to believe we're talking about this horse still. Um, you know, as a as a real strong legitimate chance in this race, and 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 like you say, the heavy ten just you know means that um, that he is a, a legitimate chance if he, if he wins. You know, on 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 weights and measures, and particularly when you look at that. That run three starts back at weight for age. You know, he's only beaten ahead by Eduardo, and you beat home nature strip. I mean, how can you deny that he he can't run up to it again? Dean Chris Waller is on the record again this week saying that it's if it's real heavy, then that's the big concern with nature strip. Uh, each time Eduardo's been able to beat it, then nature strip rebounds and says, "Hey, I'm still the star here." But the heavy track has to be of concern. Yeah, it is a concern. You know, I mean. He's won the TJ Smith in the autumn, this track distance, two years in a row. Um, he's won the Everest. He's won two VRC sprints, a more and a Galaxy. I mean, he's, he's the best sprinter in the land. And Waller always has him peaking for, for the big race, you know. So I sort of, I basically absolutely declared him in the TJ Smith and the Everest last year. Um, and, and I love the horse, you know, for that. But mm. it just feels a bit different this year, you know. He's, he wasn't as dominant in the Everest as he was in the TJ Smith last year. He's a seven-year-old now. He gets this bottomless track. His last start run was a bit below par, and, and although that, that never bothers me because I'm getting beat in the lead up, you know, in the past hasn't been a biggie. You know, he just he, he was just a bit below par there, and and you know, my challenge more was trying to find something to beat him. Yeah, uh, they just all got convictions. You know, um, Eduardo, like you say, he loves the wet, but uh, you know, he's an eight year old now. Um, you got Mars Crusader, who's who's been unlucky. You know, second to to Nature Strip, you know, twice in the big. Big 1200 last year, but uh, it's just a big question mark of whether he's going that well. You know, he, he just uh, he, he just was a bit disappointing in the, the new market, um, and so I just think there's question marks whether he's going anywhere near as well as he was last year. He was also fourth up to those races last year. He's third up this year. Uh, you know, rock and horse. I think there was no fluke about his new market win. You know, he ran second, beating the nose to Levante, who's a, who's a superstar, and, and then won the new market. But I just he's unproven on a heavy as well. And then you got Shelby 66, um, and, you know, the horse has done nothing wrong, but how can you back him to win a TJ Smith? I no. just, you know, I, I just can't. No. So it's, it's, it's very, it's very difficult, you know. It's just, uh, I, I, I can only, I can only suggest backing Nature Strip, but just nowhere near with the confidence that, that I had last year. Mars Crusader, as you say, uh, can we put it down to the straight? Maybe he didn't like, doesn't like that straight racing again? Yeah, possibly, possibly. Um, you know, I've just um, I've heard little inklings around that he's just not going as well, yeah. um, and and that's what I'm seeing at the moment. But, you know, it's a good point. Maybe he doesn't like the straight, and maybe he'll just turn it turn it right around. And um, but again, you know, he's only had one run that really heavy. He was first up that day, but he he got beat by Vada. Mm. Um, it wasn't bad, but he wasn't great. You know, so. This is what I mean. There's just so many yeah. question marks in this yeah. race. It's just, you know, uh, the Everest and the TJ, I was just extremely confident with Nature Strip, and now I'm just, uh, it's, I'm very uncertain with this race. Well, right now, Nature Strip's 290, Eduardo at 380, Shelby 66 at $6, and Danny Williams worked the horse yesterday. He was going to take it to Canberra races, uh, but decided not to, and he just said the horse is ready to go. Let's go back to the Derby race seven. Hitotsu, can it can just continue rewriting the record books out of the Victoria Derby and then the Australian Guineas and now into this race after a lack of runs, you would say three dollars sixty. Forgot you at seven dollars. Regal Lion at five fifty, and that is about it. The remainder Benos at about fifteen dollars. Uh, characters at ten dollars. Uh, and Allegron at $15. I guess some of this, uh, Dean, is just how the horses come from Monday, the quick turnaround. Yeah, um, uh, you know, that's a good point. But I, I, I do think that, um, interestingly, when the tracks are really heavy, I, I prefer horses that are on a quick backup. Um, and, and history sort of says that they back up very well on heavy tracks. So I'm not too concerned about the five-day backup. I actually, I actually like it. Um, and interestingly, in the Derby, four of the last five years, the winner has come out of the Tulloch. 
um, on that quick backup. So it does seem to be a, a real benefit. Um, nothing's won this race under, uh, you know, third up. There's been three win, fourth up, and five win, fifth up in the last 10 years, plus a seventh up and eighth up. Eighth up. But, you know, we've had this conversation before about mm. Hitotsu, and he keeps he keeps breaking those uh, uh, those sorts of metrics. But, you know, I have heard Kieran Ma uh, a bit uncertain about the horse on a heavy track. Um, and I and I just think it's it's very difficult to to back a horse in in this race on a on a bottomless heavy track who's unproven on it um, second up. You know I think it'll just be the most incredible training achievement. And although they've managed to do a couple of those, um, I'm just having to bet around Hitotsu here. Um, the one I'm really keen on is is, is Regal Lion. Uh, you know Murray Baker's won this race four of the last nine years. Um, you know his his Tullock Stakes run was uh, just absolutely exceptional. Uh, it finished home very, very strongly. It was was plus 11.4 for the last 800. Um, you know, as has had plenty of runs. This prep is, is, is rock hard fit. Um, having 10th run of the prep was was a really good third in the, in the New Zealand derby as well, beaten two lengths. Um, and that's always proves a good form race for this, particularly when it's wet. Mm. So Regal Lion ticks a, a lot of boxes actually um, advised members to take 50 to one futures just before that public lodge race. So I just couldn't believe it. A Murray Baker stayer. It was third in the New Zealand Derby was, was that price. So he seemed to have missed the boat there. So we'll certainly be cheering him on hard. Um, but I think he's a, he's a big chance. And the other one out of the Tullock who comes here fifth up, which I, I really like on this heavy track, um, with plenty of runs is, is Benno, who, who was the only one who, who finished sort of stronger than, than Regal Lion. He was, he was plus 12 for the last 800. Um, and, and he's really starting to hit his straps now. Um, he, you know, he, he was good. His first prep, he ran third in the gloaming at his second start. Uh, it was fifth in the spring champion at his third start. He's won on wet tracks before, uh, on, on debut. Um, and he handled it well on the Tullock. So, uh, you know, I, I, I do like Regal Lion, um, and Benno in particular, uh, to beat Hitotsu. And, and I think the other one. Uh, from the Karen Ma stable is, is Can't Go Wong, who, um, you know, hit the line really well in the, in the Alistair Clark, uh, finishing home strongly for second behind pre to turn. Um, and and uh, although their sectionals were, were sort of uh, slow in that race for the closing, they went really quick early. So I think he's another who's just very, very fit um, and, uh, you know, trained by the right stable that, um, you know, could uh, could run a big race in the derby as well. Andrew Forsman, uh, I contacted him this morning. Obviously, uh, I think he's in New Zealand. He could still come for the derby, but he said to me this morning, uh, they both come through their race really well. White noise clearly not helped with the outside draw. Regal line draws well, midfield, and hopefully one have to be getting too far back. Heavy track may be a concern for White House, not Regal line. Yeah, well, that, that's music to my ears. Um, I mean, I, you know, I've got a little ticket on white noise too because it wasn't, wasn't, uh, you know, it's always hard to know which Murray Baker one is the best <laughs> one. But I, I did from the Derby run, it seemed like Regal Lion was was the better horse, um, and his Tullock Tullock Stakes run was certainly very, very impressive. White noise sort of looked like he was going to do something uh, in that Tullock, and then he just sort of tired late, um, which uh, was also what he did in New Zealand Derby. But, um, you know, I, I do. I, I like this as a betting race because you're looking for fit horses who have run recently, um, and 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 I, I do like the way horses like Regal Lion, Benno, and and Can't Go Wong, in particular, profile for this race, um, as they've just got that fitness mm. uh, on the board as well as a good you know recent run. Okay, so Regal Lion is five fifty. Uh, we've got Can't Go Wong at about twenty one and five fifty, and Benno is fifteen and four twenty as it stands right now for Bet365. Uh, we're working backwards here, but we've made our way to the English size, which will end up being the first of the Group 1 races. As I said earlier, Mullane has been scratched this morning. I guess, you know, if Fireburn eats it up at Rose Hill, you've just got to feel that uh, if Gary Portelli's maintained everything, then she's got to be in the finish somewhere. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's sort of the, the natural thinking. Um, Interestingly, the last Golden Slipper winner to win the size was um, Piero in 2012. So it's been it's been 10 years since that's happened. Mm. Um, 
and you know after after a very nice price you know the golden slippy you're now being asked to take sort of two dollars thirty here so um I think that's sort of the question mark for me is just whether whether you want to be taking a a, a very skinny price now but uh it, it, you know she's hard to knock it's just uh, it's just hard for these two year olds to to back up and do it again and again as proven um by the fact that a slipper winner hasn't won the last 10 years um but uh you know it's sort of hard to to knock the horse her, her finish was was strong um in, in the gold slipper she, she certainly dominated them um and her sectionals were were you know well superior to anything else that, that came out of that race is there something that you want to back against her um look, i think there's a there's a few horses you know it's, it's interesting that historically in this race they they rarely seem to come out of the the melbourne races like the, the size produce or that sort of thing so there's a few i sort of put a line through uh, come through melbourne I think there's a few runners of interest. I think Show Court was, you know, a pretty unlucky fourth behind Sajard and um, in the in the Todman, uh, and um, you know he's only having his, his fourth start. Uh, you know, J Max sticks with him here. Um, I think he's a he's a pretty talented colt who, who, who could do something here. I think she's extreme. Um, you know, had a bit of bad luck in, in the slipper, um, and, and had performed before then. Uh, so I think she can, uh, I think she can improve here into, into this race. Charlatan's a, a horse that we talked about a fair bit. Um, unfortunately missed the slipper run, um, but has had a, a, a trial since then, um, and, and won that. Uh, you know, I've still got a lot of time for this horse and always felt, um, you know, when he had our sort of horses to follow that that um you know he could be a, a, a size and, and champagne horse you know maybe missing the slipper could could end up being a, a positive um you know he was still good uh, a good third in the todman um and dormier is the other um you know good have won this two of the last three years um and, and he's a blue diamond winner uh it was fourth in the golden slipper um and uh you know he's just got very strong form lines as well so i think if you if you're looking for something to knock off fireburn um, I think they're, they're sort of the, the best two-year-olds to do so. Okay, so 12 and then the other numbers, 10, 13, 2 and 1. At the moment, uh, Dormier's at 8.50. Uh, Charlatan, 23 and 4.40 the place. Uh, we've got uh, down the bottom, Show Court at 8.50 and 2.60. And Fireburn's the favourite, 2.50. She's extreme at $8.50. So just recapping the uh, thoughts at this stage for Dean. Uh, the size, 12, 10, 13, uh, 2 and 1. Uh, the Derby, it was 5, 15 and 9. Uh, the TJ Smith, you were sort of up in the air. You sort of thought Nature Strip, but were totally too confident there. Uh, and in the last, the uh, ninth race, the, the, the group ones, the Doncaster, it was 16, 6 and 13. So positivity outside the TJ Smith. Yeah, look, I think um, these heavy tracks, you know, they, they do bring a lot of betting opportunity. Uh, you know, it's the opportunity to find those horses that sort of fit well, have had, had recent runs, you know, handle the wet. Um, and they sometimes offer the opportunity to actually put a line for a mm. lot of horses or even just, you know, confidently risk, uh, you know, some of the favourites and, and bet around them, which which I like to do. So, uh, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the meeting. I, I think we could find some really nice winners again. You can check it all out, winningedgeinvestments.com. Tips and ratings from professional putters throughout the Autumn Carnival. Make sure you gamble responsibly. If you've got a problem, 1-800-858-858. And Dean, uh, so you hear it. Now, listeners, uh, some updates from the stewards. So Mullane has been scratched from the Inglis. It had not eaten up overnight and was uh, Peter Moody was not satisfied with transporting the horse to Sydney from his Melbourne stable. So Mullane is out, uh, maybe showing signs of a temp. Who knows there? Zoo Station, as we told you, has developed heat and swelling in a foreleg and uh, will be scanned. So how's it, Kev? The emergency for the central area is now a runner in the final 16. How's it, Kev, in the country championship race? And Lighthouse, an acceptor in the Doncaster, has a pulse in the near near foot, near four foot, and lameness in that foot, for which it's currently receiving treatment and vet care. It will be examined tomorrow. So that's the latest with Lighthouse under some cloud at this stage, but being treated for that foot 
problem. So we'll keep an eye on that tomorrow. Uh, Dean, thank you very much for joining us. Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments. Treat betting like a business.